Okay, so I don't burn up all our time I'm just going over questions that nobody wants to know about. Let's start with your questions. If there's something that you brought today, we'll start those, with those first. Yes. Um, it's 11, 12, and 13. The, the the 11 one, when I was looking at it today, kind of building this, it's labeled Quiz 10. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of confusing. Sorry about that. It's a... Uh, I need to I need to figure out which way I want to label the quizzes, either by week or in order, you know, because they get off a little bit when we have um, weeks without quizzes. So this is called Quiz 11, but if you print that PDF at the top, it says Quiz 10. So I don't know. So it's thermodynamics, uh, electrochem, redox reactions, and nuclear chemistry. Yeah, no, it's crazy cold. Yes. Are we going to be the thermo chart? Yeah, yeah thermo and electrochem chart. Yeah, you'll have that on the test. Uh, you'll have the Nernst equation on the test because I don't want somebody screwing up the point oh five nine one seven or whatever that number is. I always have to look that up too. So um, I'll give you the Nernst equation. Um, I may even give you the first order. Yeah, I'll give you the first order kinetics equations, the Nernst equation, the um, Think of it, there's any of the others. Um, like the equilibrium Gibbs energy equation, where the equilibrium constant and Gibbs energy. Yeah. So, equations shouldn't be a problem. I'll give you a whole sheet with, with that stuff on it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's kind of at the end of, uh, there's like three that are go together. And so I'll just work all three of those. Sound good? And so we're looking at this, um, and I've got that, that table here. So this is asking you, if you make a voltaic cell with copper and aluminum, in fact, all of these are related, so let's just go through all of them. Um, so if we want to make a voltaic cell with copper and aluminum, uh, which one is the reducing agent and oxidizing agent and all that stuff, okay? So we want to make a, a spontaneous cell with copper and aluminum. So here's our chart. And let's make sure we've got, um, yeah, it doesn't say, it just says copper and aluminum. But you see up here, there's like copper two plus and one plus and all of that. So here's a reaction here that is the reduction of copper two plus to make copper metal. And so if we run that one forward, okay, and then we run the aluminum backwards, the aluminum will be oxidized and the copper will be reduced. And this is what I was saying. If these are sorted in you know descending order, so the top is the most positive, the bottom is the most negative, then clockwise, clockwise pairings are spontaneous. And so this would be a plus. So E cell, let's just calculate it right here. E cell, standard E cell would be a plus. 0.34 and then down here it would be minus a negative 1.66 these are volts see we flipped this one because we're going to run this reaction backwards okay and so that's going to be you know 0.34 and 0.66 that's going to be 2.0 so it's going to be positive 2.00 volts and the reaction will be the copper two plus plus the aluminum, right? We're running this one backwards. So this is the reactant here, giving us aluminum three plus plus copper solid. So that top reaction ran forward, the bottom reaction ran backwards. Now we could balance these in terms of half reactions. Um, since there's no oxygens or anything like that, it'll go pretty fast. So let's go ahead and do aluminum solid. There's a three plus. And in fact, if you have these reactions here, all you gotta do is um, get the electrons to work out.
See how we ran the aluminum one backwards? Ran it as an oxidation. All right, so we've got to get the electrons to pair up. See down here, it looks like this reaction is balanced, but it's not. Because look at the charges. We have two plus on the left and three plus on the right. Okay, it's because these electrons don't match. And so we've got to figure out a way to match these electrons. So I'm going to multiply this top one by two. So I get six electrons. And I'm going to multiply the bottom one by three. So I get six electrons. And then they match. So when we match all of these down, we have three Cu2 plus plus two Al solid. I should put aqueous here. All right, so there now it's balanced. And that makes sense because I have uh, six pluses on the left and six pluses on the right. So we're all good. So that's my balanced reaction. You can look at the half reactions to know which is, which is reduced and which is oxidized. And so this aluminum became aluminum three plus. The oxidation number went up. That means it was oxidized. Another way to say it is the aluminum lost electrons. And in Texas, we think of oil rigs. So oxidation is loss of electrons. It's when it goes past the arrow, it lost electrons. Okay, so the aluminum was oxidized. Okay, and then that means this guy gained electrons when it went across the arrow, so this was reduced. So the copper 2 plus was reduced. Now, in terms of the agents, so if this was reduced, it was the oxidizing agent. Right, so the agents, just think of like you've got a, I don't know, real estate agent. They make things happen, right? This made oxidation happen. Not to itself, but to the other client, right? It made the aluminum be oxidized, okay? And then this is the reducing agent. The aluminum is the reducing agent. So basically it's backwards. If it was oxidized, then it was the reducing agent. Exactly. If it was reduced, it was the oxidizing yep. agent. Yep. It's the role that they play, yeah. And aluminum is very happy to get rid of those electrons. And so it, if it can give electrons to something, it's reducing it. And it's oxidized, it reduces other things. Okay. So that answers a couple of those questions on that quiz. So here, we make a voltaic cell with aluminum and copper. What is the reducing agent? Okay, it has to be one of the reactants and it's gonna be the aluminum solid. Okay, what is the oxidizing agent in this case? It's the thing that takes the electrons, it's gonna be the Cu2 plus. Okay, and then if you make a voltaic cell with copper and aluminum, what is the cell potential for the spontaneous reaction? So that's the one that, that goes without external in intervention, and it's going to be the one that has a positive charge. So this is not spontaneous, this is not spontaneous, this is not spontaneous. So all the negatives are gone. If it's a spontaneous cell potential, it's going to be positive, okay? Like always means positive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if it's spontaneous, it has to have a positive cell potential. So you can eliminate, you know, three out of the five right there. And it's, we did that. It was the cell potential of 2.00 volts. Okay. And so if we get, if we put this together and we've got a, a voltage that's higher than two, okay, then we've got a different Q. We're not at, we're not at the standard uh, concentrations. We're at some other kind of concentrations. And so we need to solve for this Q. So, we know N. What is N? See, we, we had to sort of know about the reaction so that we could know N. So where on this page is N, the number of electrons? It's 
it's in both the redox or the oxidation. We had to make them uh, equal. It's six. It's this. It was this this number that we were trying to get to with the two times three and the three times two. You know that common number of electrons. That's in. So it's six electrons. So n equals six. Okay, and then Q, let's go back to our, let me just write our reaction out here. So that was, um, it was three Cu2 plus, plus two aluminum. Okay, so, a reaction quotient is the, it looks like the equilibrium constant expression, but it's just not the concentrations at equilibrium. So, so Q is equal to products over reactants and no solids and no pure liquids. So we have this aluminum three plus concentration squared over copper cubed. Is everybody cool with that? All right, that's Q, that's the reaction quotient. So we know that guy, where well, we're going to solve for that guy, actually. Um, and then E cell, that's this number right here. This is, the con this is the potential when all the concentrations are one molar. Okay. And then this 2.50 is right there. So that's the whole thing. You can be given the equation, but if you don't know where all the pieces go, the equation doesn't help you. So I don't mind giving you an equation because I figure with the equation, you can show me that you know how to how to use the equation. So let's, let's solve this. Uh, 2.50 volts is equal to 2.00 volts minus 0 0.05917 volts over six. Log Q. So we got to solve for that Q. So we got a lot of algebra to do. So let's move the move everything over. Okay, does everybody see all the pieces? I moved the two over and subtracted it. Then I divided by this piece, which means that the 0.059 went on bottom and the six went on top. And that's equal to the log of Q. So do you see how I moved everything over algebraically? All right. And then I'm gonna take 10 to, the, 10 to both sides. So 10 to both sides. and that's going to kill that log, and so that's equal to Q. Let me look up the math on this. So what did you get? Two times 10 to the minus 51? Okay. Okay, so that's a really, really small number, which means we have very little aluminum, right? The products. So we have almost all reactants, no products. Um, let me make that a better two. Okay, so then if we make this uh, voltaic cell with copper and aluminum, the cell potential is measured to be 2.1 volts at room temperature, and the concentration of copper is, is one molar. What is the concentration of the aluminum? So essentially it's the same problem, you just have a different number here. So this 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.1, 2.
goes in right there. Okay, so Q is equal to 10 to the minus 2.1 minus 2.0 times 6. Okay, and I get 7.239. times 10 to the minus 11. Okay, and so that is equal to this concentration of aluminum squared on top of copper cubed. That's kind of small to write. That's ugly. Let me write it on this side. Okay. <coughs> and if this one is one molar, you see what it's saying in the problem? The copper is one molar. What is the concentration of the aluminum? So we just take the square root of that, right? So take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 7.2 um, Three nine times ten to the minus eleven. Okay. And what do we get on that one? <clears throat> really? That's strange because you should be able to calculate that one. Yeah. Seven point two. Uh, eight point five times ten to the negative six. Point. Eight point five times ten to the negative six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not seeing any answers, so. Pardon? You changed it. I did? Okay, is this not changed? Oh, yeah. That was on the email that there wasn't a right answer. Yeah, and I found I found out why. I'm looking at my notes here, and I just I just quickly, I saw the AL3+, plus and I took the, the, the cube root, and I got 0. 0.0004. So that 0. 0.0004 was because I took the cube root instead of this square root. And so <clears throat> the real answer should be what y'all are getting, the 8 point something. Can you tell me what it is? Yeah. Okay. And it's, if you're bothered by, I don't know, you may not be bothered by this, but if you're bothered by, like we do all this calculation and then we just stick a molar on the end, okay? It's because this these reaction quotients and equilibrium constants are approximations, okay? And, and we'll learn about that in PCHEM 2, okay? So there is an answer to that. It's just, we're not going to go there right now. It's just beyond this course, <laughs> okay? So you're just taking questions right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, can I ask them? Or... Yeah, please. Okay, uh, so I, I still, like I worked it out, but it, it, it blanks for me again. I don't remember how I got to the right answer. Okay. Uh, for question five on the recent exam, I think I emailed you too. Okay, Let's, let me pause though, because we just did a lot of work. Let me just make sure there's not anything about this particular okay. bit of work that anybody wants to clarify. Was there anything that we just did that- So the 17 basically just are kind of switching up a couple of numbers based off the question, just going back and calculating it again. Mm -hmm. All of the Yeah, so yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I was trying to get away from uh, um, I was trying to get away from a double jeopardy thing where like if you got anyway i was trying to give you just a separate set of numbers yeah okay anything else okay go ahead now oh it was uh number five on the recent exam recent exam or, yeah. or quiz? quiz okay that's okay i'm just making sure we're on the same page that one, yeah. this one here okay so the way I, where I'm getting confused is, um, 
adding the electron is like the same, well, like it should be the same as like the protons, you know, with the normal atoms. So I thought that it was 8A at first because that has a uh, 10 electron. Um, oh yeah. And um, adding an electron would give you 11. Yeah, so this electron is going into the nucleus. That's the difference. Okay, okay. and so it's, uh, it's really, that's a good point. Like whenever in the nuclear chapter, when we're talking about this kind of thing, we're, we're dealing with an energy scale that's so much bigger than just the valence electrons. And so we're really not even caring about the valence electrons in the nuclear stuff. So this electron is going into the nucleus. And so really, I just want to draw a dividing line right here where the arrow is. Okay, and so the, the protons on the left have to equal the proton count on the right. And so down here, since I have a minus one, I have to have a 12. So 12 minus one is 11. So that's all I have to do is just to figure out um, what the proton count is. And then I can go to find element number 12. So that's magnesium. That's a strange sound. Scary sound. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so right here I have enough to answer the question because I'm going to be in magnesium and that's group 2A. Yeah, so then that'll be 2A. Yeah. No, that's good. No, because it's again, it's an electron, but it's going into the nucleus. And so this would be, um, yeah, so uh, sodium spitting out a, you know, spitting out a, an electron or a beta particle. Yes. Oh, but let me go ahead and finish this other thing. So it'd be 24. So that would be the, again, zero here, 24, 24. So those match as well. Okay, go ahead. Um, can you do oh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. Anyway, what would this be called, by the way? Yeah, this right here is a, an electron that came out of the sodium nucleus. So that's beta decay. Decay because it's it's a product, it's producing a beta particle, and so it's just the nucleus is unstable, so it breaks into two particles, one beta particle and one new nucleus. Okay. Yeah, beta emission, beta decay. Yeah, that's the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beta decay or beta emission. <coughs> Yeah, an alpha particle would be two and four here, which is the same as a helium nucleus. Is alpha always going to be the helium? Yeah, because it's two protons. And so it's just like a helium nucleus just being spit out of the middle of, of a bigger nucleus is alpha. alpha. Eleven? Yes. Okay. So here, iodine-131 has a half-life of 8.04 days. Assuming you start with 1.53 milligrams, how many milligrams will remain after 13 days? Okay, so here's where we need those, um, those that e first-order equation, uh, kinetics equation. So the activity or concentration or anything at some time t is equal to the initial concentration e to the minus kt. Okay. And k is equal to the natural log of 2 over time t1 half. So a lot of times I'll just stick that into this equation. So that's equal to a0 e to the minus log of 2 times t over t one half, right? So then I can just put this half life of eight point oh four days right into the equation right there. So the t and a half is just the half life. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then I've got remain after thirteen days. So that right there is my t on top. And then a thirteen one point five three milligram sample is my initial concentration. So that goes right there. Yeah, so you have three, all three pieces of the puzzle, and then we can solve for the concentration or the activity at time t.
So putting the numbers in, that's going to equal um, 1.53 milligrams e to the minus one of two, 13 days, divided by 8.04 days. And this is the equation for first order kinetics. So this is the same with any kind of kinetics, like chemical kinetics. You know, if you had a first order reaction that had a half-life of eight, eight days, you know, it done, and this isn't just for nuclear chemistry. So this is sort of a callback to your kinetics chapter two. You do the same exact type of problem. Does somebody have a number for us? 499. Point Okay. All right. Yes. 18. Okay. Any questions on this one? Okay. Eighteen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, refer to table one. What is the rate constant for the decay of this radionuclide? Okay, we have, uh, this is great because this is like the data you would get in lab. So you got to figure out. Now we have um, time and we have AT. So um, we have time zero. So this one right here is A zero. We have AT, we have time. <coughs> And so what we could do is we could just say at time of three minutes, so that could equal T, and we could say this one is AT. So now we have 1.15 um, CPM times E to the minus KT, right? K times... Um, three minutes and that is equal to oh I did this wrong 1.23 is right here this is a zero 1.23 sorry and 1.15 you see how we have all the parts we can solve for K I'll put this in parentheses so you know that's all one piece so that was A0, it goes right here in front of the E. This is AT, goes out front. This time T goes way over here on the right, and we can solve for K. So we end up with the natural log of 1.15 over 1.23. I'm going to put the minus over here. All right, so convince yourself if you need to later that the, all that algebra worked out. So I divided both sides by 1.23. I took the natural log to get rid of the E. I moved the negative sign over and I moved the 3 over. And so that's equal to K. So we can crank through all of that. So my calculator, 1.5, natural log, change the sign, 3, 5, okay. 0.0224. And you see how the top, the, these units cancel? and we're left with inverse minutes. Okay. And so if that's the, um, the rate constant, then T one half is equal to the natural log of two over K.
30 points. Okay, any questions on those pieces? Yes. I, I think I went through and checked that you got the same answer on all of those. And, and if you, if you, um, you know, if it's first order kinetics, you could use any pairing. Yeah. Um, if I had all this data and only needed two rows to calculate my equilibrium constant or my uh, rate constant, why would I do the experiment, you know, five times, right? It was for statistics. So you could get error bars, like you could know how certain you were. I guess just remember, like, doing yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you could go through and you could calculate it all five ways and then average it and you could get a standard deviation. And so you would get a really good number. I didn't ask you to do that, but, you know, that's why you would do the experiment multiple times. You won't ask us to do that. No, no, no. But that's if you were doing this for real and you wanted to not just give me a, a, your rate constant, but actually know how certain you were, you do it three or four times and then you have some plus or minus on there. Yeah, yeah. So you just pick two rows, and you have a zero and a t, and uh, and it'll work. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Sixteen. Yeah. Okay. So this is asking for the time. So that's great. So we have the half life. So up here is t one half. And we've got a 25 milligram sample, so that's going to be A0. It's going to 8.7, so that's AT. So we have everything but the time. And so this is going to be another uh, algebra exercise. So we have, um, let me just write out the equation again since it's not on this page. AT equals A0, E to the minus lin2 over T1 half. Oh goodness. Okay. Times time. So there's our first order kinetics equation, and we know everything but the time. So AT is 8.7 and 25. So we're going to solve for that little t right there. So I'm going to take the ratio, 8.7 divided by 25. Those units will cancel. So then I'm left with the e, so I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. There's a negative sign over there, so I'm going to move it over. And then I'm going to I'm going to um, bring the natural log of two over, so that's going to be on the bottom. And uh, the thirty years is on the bottom on the right, so I'm going to move it over to the top. That was a whole lot of algebra. Go back to the video if it confused you, but this is just sort of I just worked my way through. I, I had this twenty five on the right, I brought it down to the left. Then I had this e to the x, and so I take the natural log of that ratio, and that got rid of the e to the x. Brought the negative sign over, 30 years on top, natural log of 2 on bottom, and I'm left with t over there by itself. So how did you break this up, putting it into a calculator? you start with the numerator? Yeah, so I always do this stuff inside the natural log first. Um, so I do 8.7, divide that by 25. Okay, and then I take the natural log. Okay, and then I go ahead and change the sign. It's, it's a less than one, so it comes out to be a negative log, and so then I change the sign, so now it's a positive. I got 1.056 for that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and multiply by the 30. Okay, and then I'm gonna divide by the natural log of two. 4.569, yeah. 
Oh, no, 45. I have it in scientific notation. So times 10 to the 1. So 45.7. Okay, so 46. Does that help? A little bit of algebra, but, um, you know, that's, uh, that's why it's a prereq. <laughs> right? Okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. In advising, they, they show Dr. Norman and he do the advising. He had the quadratic formula on the board or whatever. And people were like, oh, I know I don't meet the pre but I can do it. I can do it. And he's like, well, do you know what that equation is? And they're like, no, I have no idea. He's like, no, you need to go take college algebra. <laughs> so that you'll be prepared. Because if you get into questions like this, you really want to know the chemistry. But if the math isn't there, it's really difficult. Yeah. And so... <clears throat> A lot of times we chemists are sad because we're getting a bad rap when you really don't like algebra. <laughs> yeah, there's quite a bit of math in uh, in chemistry, especially when you get into physical chemistry, which is what I teach mostly. Yeah. So. One time when I was advising, the parent was there, and I said. I want to be a doctor. I go, okay. So I sign them up, you know, chemistry, physics, calculus, and they're like, oh, I don't like science. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said, like, oh, you going to be a doctor. <laughs> Mom was like, yeah, he's going to be a doctor. I was like, he doesn't like science. <laughs> if he ends up being a doctor, I don't want him to be a doctor for me. <laughs> Pushing something into my IV and they don't know how to convert units. And I'm like, oh, no. They have for that. <laughs> yeah, milligrams per kilogram. What's a kilogram? Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right. More questions? We got some time. Can you go back to this? Okay. Still coming out with that calculation. 16? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't have a TI 30. I've got this one on my, calculator, on my uh, phone. So there's some stashed in here. Oh, let's see. Can you bring it up here? I'll just look at it real quick. Let me do one that I know like I'll do. Ten to the Oh, that's the step that's given the error. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hmm. that's weird. Well, I hit air, I hit enter, and it worked. <laughs> well, you had it in there, it worked. Yeah, this time, seven point two three nine times ten to the minus eleven. So, I just hit enter at the end. We can look. We can yeah, fiddle with it after class. Yeah. Will there be like a full read-off reaction? I'm assuming, and like any exam that we're probably gonna have to do. Yeah, like these up here. You mean like balance the redox reaction and do all that stuff? Oh, exactly the one you just did. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, this one has oxygens and hydrogens and stuff like that in it. And so let's break the half reactions apart. So this is again, this is H and O. It's going to be related to NO. So that's going to be one of the half reactions. I'll do it kind of quick. Um, I hope I have enough room on the right here. Uh, some people that came to my office hours and kind of checked in on this one had trouble because they didn't realize like there was already an oxygen on this one. So when they were balancing, they just totally missed that there was already an oxygen there. Okay, they were putting two waters over here. It should have just been one, yeah. So, so there's already an oxygen on that nitrogen, so we only have one water that we need to add to the right. Okay. And then, so we've got both oxygens balanced. Now there's an imbalance in the hydrogens. And so we've got, yeah, we just need to add one H plus over here. 
okay? And now I've got a plus over here and I've got zero on the right, so I need to add one electron. And so that one is balanced. Two oxygens on either side, two nit one nitrogen on either side, two hydrogens on either side, and one electron. And so then the mercury one would be HG, liquid. Mercury is so cool, it's liquid. And then HG2 plus. And there's no oxygens, no hydrogens. All I need to do is add the electrons. So two electrons on the right. Then we can balance these out. I've got to double everything on the top to get the electrons. And so right now I know N, if I'm going to use the Nernst equation, N is two, because it's that common amount of electrons that are that are balanced. So I'm just going to put N equals two. Okay. So then we have two H plus plus two H NO2s plus HT liquid. All right, so that's our balanced redox reaction. No, oh, I missed the th a two here. <laughs> Got too quick and two waters. Okay. All right, so we go to the re redox re table and see if we've got, the, I don't remember if it's in this group here. Um, let's see. Yeah, there, no, that's not it. It's just not in this one that I have in the in the PowerPoint. It's in the one that was attached. Yeah, it's in it's in the one for your homework. I just grabbed this out of the lecture. So what's the potential for this top one? It's a reduction, so you don't need to flip it. One more time. Plus 0.13. Okay. And do I do anything with this? Since I multiplied this reaction by two, do I do anything to this? Let's say it louder. Louder. <laughs> Just because I multiplied this reaction by two, I do not mess with this number. Remember, it's a force. It's not a capacity. It's not a quantity. It's a, it's how hard it pushes. And so we're not changing that number. We're just, we might flip the sign if we reverse the reaction, but we're not doubling it or tripling it or anything. And the mercury oxidation, what's it say in the table? We did flip this one, so we got to flip the sign. Anybody have it? The, the mercury reaction. It's the oxidation reaction. So we flip that reaction and we change the sign on that potential. Did you already flip the sign? Okay. It was originally positive. Okay. So negative, positive. <laughs> what was it? Point eight five. Okay. I'm I'm doing this real quick so that we can get to the this equilibrium constant. Okay, so we add those together. So what do we end up with? So E cell zero is equal to, um, let's see, five minus three is two. Okay, and eight minus seven, so negative seven, two. Is that what y'all get? The 0.13 volts up there at the top was the answer. Um, oh, okay. What's for this half reaction? What do we got? Was 0.98. Okay. So po positive 0.98. Yeah. Okay. 0 0.98. Okay. And so then when we take the difference, we get positive 0 0.13 volts. Thank you. <clears throat> now, how is that related to the equilibrium constant? Right? See? Balance this reaction. 
What's the equilibrium constant for this reaction? Now, how the heck am I going to get that? We have to go through delta G. If I know the delta G of the reaction, I can get the equilibrium constant because uh, the equilibrium constant is equal to E to the minus delta G over RT. Okay, so I've got to get delta G. Delta G is equal to minus NFE cell. So it's delta G zero, we got the E cell zero, so we're good. Okay, so we've got the E cell here, so delta G is equal to minus two, see that two up there? It's important now, two electrons. Faraday's constant, that's on that periodic table that I give you in, on the test, it's F, and it's right here. And it's 96,485 joules per mole per volt. So, nine, eight, nine, six, sorry. Shame on my memory. Nine, six, four, eight, five joules per mole and it's that mole of electrons that we're canceling there. <clears throat> and the cell potential plus 0 0.13 volts. So the volts are canceling and we're left with joules. Joules for that reaction. So. <coughs> so 2 enter 9, 6, 4, 8, 5 times and point point three times. So I got twenty six twenty five thousand eighty six joules. Okay, so now I can I can calculate K. So K Oh, and it's negative. It's spontaneous, right? So it's a negative. It's positive cell potential, negative delta G. And it doesn't say what temperature we should use. So what temperature do you think all of these cell potentials and everything are at? Yeah, 298 Kelvin. Okay, so we have the 25,000, 8.314 divide, and 298 divide. And I get like 10.125, so. Yeah. So we end up with the 2.5 times 10 to the fourth. So do you see how you got that one? This is a simple looking little equation. We balance the, this has everything in it. It's beautiful. We balance the, the redox reaction using half reactions. We figure out what N is. Uh, we find the cell potential. We use this equation here that the Gibbs energy related to the cell potential. And then that gives us the Gibbs energy. Then we use this equation here, which relates the Gibbs energy to equilibrium constant. It's amazing. We have everything, equilibrium, redox reactions, K, voltage. And this is how they find a lot of equilibrium constants, is they'll measure the electrochemical potential and then they know the K. So you can figure it out. Is there class party? No.
<laughs> it's all right. All right, so y'all have a, a great study time. Number eight. I found it a different way. That was number eight. Like, yeah, like a lot simpler. It may have been sure. Uh, I was just trying to show all the different things. I don't know, because I got the same answer just doing Sweet. that. Oh, yeah, very good. No, that works. Yeah. Do you have the attendance sheet? Pardon? The attendance sheet? It should be running around. There it is. Okay. Yeah. Thank you.